All right, hey guys. Today we're gonna to look at uh, section 12.3. We're gonna discuss how one can do compute double integrals using polar coordinates. So I've written down an example for you to consider. And if you look at this example, uh, it's sort of clear that this is gonna be a little bit nasty because of the radical, the top right radical there. So let's go ahead and begin by sketching our region of integration. So I'm gonna draw my X and my Y axes. So this is X, this is Y. And then I'm interested in um, the top equation is X equals the square root of four minus Y squared, which becomes X squared plus Y squared equals four. And the bottom equation is X equals Y. So let's realize that this guy, this equation, is the right-hand side of this circle. So we can begin by graphing that. So we'll just think of that as each square here is length 2, something like that. And then y equals x. Uh, we'll just draw it right like that. And so you can see from the cut here that x is going from y over to the circle. And what's y doing? y is going from 0 to root 2. If you solve when does x equal y, where do, what's the curve of intersection right here? You'll get 2y squared equals 4, so y squared is 2, so y is root 2. So the point is, this is the point root 2 comma root 2 sitting right there. And so that's actually our region of integration if we zoom in here. This is the region that we want to integrate over. And so suddenly you begin to see, man, that's perfect for polar. If I want to describe this region in polar coordinates, I would note that theta is going from 0, and I'm swinging up to what? Ask yourself what the angle is there. It's just pi force. My radius, r, is going from 0, and it's going out to length 2. So the question is, how does switching to polar coordinates change the integral? Well, let's take a look and see what happens. It turns out that, in general, when you want to switch to polar, you can recall that x is r cosine theta. We said x equal to r cosine theta, y equal to r sine theta. And when I want to switch the integration here, uh, I'm simply going to rewrite my bounds, my bounds, in terms of their polar bounds. I'm going to plug x equals r cosine theta and y equals r sine theta into f of x, y. So I just plug in the substitution. It's the dA part, the dx, dy part that changes. And so here's the moral of the story. I'm just going to cut to the chase here. When you want to write down dA in polar, dA is not just dr, d theta. It's r, dr, d theta. So when I want to make this switch, my original integral looks something like this. It was a double integral over some region, f of x, y, dA. This is going to become a new integral. You're going to have bounds on r. r goes from a to b. Bounds on theta. Theta goes from alpha to beta. Instead of f of x, you're going to have f of r cosine theta. Instead of f of y, you're going to have r sine theta, and then you're going to go r dr d theta. Here, r is between a and b, and theta is between alpha and beta. So those are, those are the bounds. That's how you set this up. So let's dive in and do an example of this in the next video. I'm going to pause.